What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 video. So this is going to be more of a discussion video. So a lot of people have been asking me to talk about some of the big developments in the PS4 scene right now that have come to light over the past kind of few weeks. So there's two big pieces of news that people are talking about, one of which being the whole backporting method to allow games that normally require a higher firmware uh, actually running on 5.05 PS4s. So there's kind of two games right now, Moons of Madness and Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo, that are available right now on 5.05. Now these games haven't even been officially released yet, but for some reason we have them right now and can run them on 5.05. So how the hell does this work? There's also a list of games that people think will be backported to run on 5.05 that was um, released as well. So people see these two things and assume that that means that we're going to get all of these games that normally couldn't run on 5.05 now running on 5.05 and you know people have been asking me to make a tutorial on the whole backporting method as if we can do it right now and it's all a done deal but you know when you look into it a bit more you can see that uh, unfortunately it's not quite that cut and dry yet so first of all the reason moons of madness and final fantasy 7 remake demo were leaked was because the package files for those games were left on a publicly accessible server, clearly by mistake. Now somebody found the package files left on that server and downloaded them, and that's how these games were leaked before release. Apparently there were other package files on that server as well that the person didn't download for some odd reason, but who knows, you know, they could be lying about that, or maybe um, maybe they did download it and just didn't tell people, but those two games, Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo and Moons of Madness, were uh, leaked from that server. Now the reason we have them running on 5.05 is down to the fact that the package files left on the server were not normal retail package files and they were never meant for public use. They were kind of QA package files meant for playtesters to test the game before launch, I'm assuming. You know, to find bugs, developers would have been building these package files on the fly, playtesters would have been testing them for bugs, reporting back to the devs who would then be fixing the bugs, building another package file for further tests, etc. So this meant that these package files did not have the same security that a normal retail package file would have. So these QA packages actually had a decrypted eboot.bin, just like a fake package file. So, you know, when you use the dumper payload on 5.05 to dump your disk games, it decrypts the eboot.bin and extracts the files so that you can then build a fake package file from those files and run it on 5.05 with the homebrew enabler payload. Now, retail package files, they normally have their eboot.bins encrypted and the package files encrypted and password protected. Um, it also turns out that there was a vulnerability in the QA package files that allowed the game files to be extracted without the need for the passcode. Either that or some keys were leaked for, from a higher firmware SDK that could be used to extract the QA package files. I'm not 100% certain on that, but either way, the game files were extracted from the QA package files, and because the eboot.bin was already decrypted, the games could be backported, turned into a fake package file that can now run on your 5.05 PS4. But that doesn't really help that much on getting games backported as these QA package files are hard to come by and if there was a vulnerability in them, Sony would have probably patched it by now when these leaks were made public. So, you know, the chances of it actually being that useful for getting other games backported are pretty slim. So that's that side of the story. But what's up with this other list of games here? Um, so it turns out that around the same time, it was discovered that a default passcode for Unreal Engine 4 was leaked. It was actually leaked a while ago, but apparently it was only discovered recently. So this is a default passcode used for package files built in Unreal Engine 4. Just like when you build fake package files, uh, you have the option to you know, add a custom passcode or generate a random passcode to encrypt the package file. In Unreal Engine 4, the devs could build the package files and if they did not specify a custom passcode, Unreal Engine 4 would just use its own default passcode, which is the same for everyone, um, to encrypt the package files. And it turns out that many games developed in Unreal Engine 4, the developers never actually changed this default passcode. So all the games that are marked as yes in this list are games where the default passcode that was leaked um, was not changed on these games and so it can be used to extract the contents of the game's retail package files. All the ones marked as no, obviously the developers actually changed the passcode so those ones were not able to be extracted. 
So this is a good step in the right direction as we now have the game files extracted on many of these uh, newer Unreal Engine 4 titles. However, there is still a big roadblock on actually getting these games backported, which is that since these are retail package files, not QA package files like the Moons of Madness and Final Fantasy VII Remake demo that was leaked, because these are retail package files, the eboot.bin is still encrypted and we cannot build a fake package file to run on 5.05 .05 unless we have a decrypted eboot.bin. Um, so that's a big problem. Now there are efforts right now on trying to find a workaround to this problem, like trying to use another eboot.bin from an older Unreal Engine 4 title that is decrypted and trying to kind of patch it to work with the newer games um, potentially. But I mean, that does seem like a bit of a stretch, but who knows, maybe they'll find some success with that. Um, it's easy for people to get amped up when they see this list of games and see these two games that have been leaked before they've even released. I think the, the release dates were actually pushed back because of this to April, but we can run them right now on 5.05. .05. But when you look into it, you can see that there's several issues to try and work around before we can actually see other games get backported. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but... I was getting people asking me to, you know, make a backporting tutorial as if it was all a done deal and that we can backport higher firmware games on 5.05 .05, and people were just waiting for me to come out with a tutorial. Unfortunately, it's not as um, simple as that. We don't actually know if we're, we're going to be able to get other games backported at this stage. Um, but, you know, remain optimistic. Hopefully uh, something will come out of this. So the other big piece of news in the PS4 scene is that there is an open source SDK uh, for building PS4 Homebrew that's been worked on uh, by a team consisting of, I think Crazy Void is the main developer. There's also Dewey Dog and Spectre Dev are involved. I think there's other people involved as well. I think it's nearing completion on this SDK and they've managed to create a basic Homebrew app using the SDK, which is just a Hello World app as proof of concept that this open source SDK can create Homebrew that runs on the PS4. So for many people, this may seem kind of pointless as there's already the official SDK that was leaked and people have been using that to make more substantial homebrew for a while now. But in reality, this is actually a pretty huge deal. You see the problem with using the official leaked SDK from Sony is that the SDK was never officially released by Sony. You know, it was leaked, it's meant to be private. And so all the code in that official SDK from Sony is Sony's intellectual property, it's copyrighted code. Um, so you cannot legally distribute that and this means that whenever someone creates some homebrew that uses that official SDK tools to compile the app or to convert a file they are they now have Sony's copyrighted works as part of their homebrew app uh, meaning that they can't legally distribute it or license their own homebrew apps and this clearly puts off a lot of developers in getting involved in making homebrew and other tools for the PS4 they just stay clear of the PS4 scene uh, because of this issue and just to be clear, it's unlikely that you're actually going to get into any trouble if you do make tools or homebrew that, that use the official SDK. Um, you know, Sony's very unlikely to go after any individual person. They're more likely to go after whoever leaked the SDK, but, you know, I guess that was anonymous or something. But still, a lot of developers, just based on principle, will avoid creating anything for the PS4 if it uses any copyrighted code. And especially for people who want to license their own software, you know, they're not going to be able to do that if it contains any copyrighted code uh, in there. So it puts a lot of developers off, which is not a good thing. And this also affects mods as well as homebrew, because if you're using, you know, the SDK tools to convert files and stuff to make mods for specific games for the PS4, then websites that host mods may not want to actually host them uh, for fear of potential legal ramifications sometime down the line. You know, just because if they host the mod then and that mod contains any of Sony's copyrighted code in there, then they're technically redistributing it. So a lot of websites may not want to host stuff um, for the PS4 as well because of that. So having an open source SDK that doesn't contain any of Sony's copyrighted code will allow developers to make homebrew apps and tools that can be legally distributed and licensed under general public licenses. And this should bring in, you know, more developers into the scene, which is good for the whole scene in general. And of course, it means more homebrew apps and tools to make PS4 modding better for everyone. Um, and it should also bring more attention to the PS4 modding scene in general when more well-known sites are able to start hosting PS4 
um, content, uh, PS4 modding content, um, providing it was made using this open source SDK instead of the official one. So it's a pretty huge deal. So those are the two big pieces of news coming out of the PS4 scene right now. There was also a new Linux kernel that was um, new Linux patches that were released uh, not too long ago so that you can now run things like Gen 2 Linux distro on your PS4. I wanted to cover that, I really did, but unfortunately my PS4 just does not work with those patches. So, you know, it's just, my PS4 is not great when it comes to running Linux. It has a lot of problems running Linux. It's just one of those models that is not very compatible. So. I am going to be getting another PS4 soon, hopefully, um, and maybe I'll get better luck with that one, who knows. Um, if I do, I'll make you know more Linux videos, but um, that's why you haven't really seen any Linux videos on PS4 from me in quite some time. I also wanted to do a video on running Linux from the internal hard drive as well, but you know, months ago I wanted to do that, but again, it's not compatible with my PS4, unfortunately. So that's it for uh, this discussion video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. Um, let me know if you want me to do more of these. I am going to do a channel update for 2020 as well pretty soon. But if you want me to do more of these kind of discussion videos, then let me know in the comments down below. And let me know your thoughts about this news as well in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.